This video is all about agents of socialization. I'm not going to sort of get into the specifics of each and every one of them. I think that's relatively well covered in the textbook, but definitely throw it in the discussion boards if you're struggling with it. Um, at a broad level, agents of socialization are how we get culture, how we arrive at any given place that sort of transmits culture, um, because we sort of talk at this level of like socialization exists and people, people learn culture from the people around them. Agents of socialization are sort of some ways of understanding what actually what that actually looks like. So we've got lots of examples of them. We've got um, family, school, peers, media. Those are the ones that are sort of listed in your textbook. Depending on sort of where you're looking outside of that, you might find lists that include uh, religion, um, government, um, the economy, that kind of thing. Like there are other lists. The list doesn't actually matter. I'm not going to ask you to sit down and like name all five. That's not the goal. Um, so the real, like what you're looking at when you're looking at agents of socialization are sort of, we often talk about them as social institutions. Um, and the idea there is that agents of socialization are patterns of interaction that exist in our society, even if you personally don't interact with them. So the idea, so basically just because you as an individual, for example, choose not to engage with media, okay, you don't want to watch television, you don't want to read books, you don't want to like listen to the radio, you want to sort of step outside of all of that. That doesn't mean that media doesn't exist as an agent of socialization. It may not have a massive effect on your life, but it still exists as, a mass, as an agent of socialization in society, right? Um, same is true for sort of things like family, right? The idea of family and the idea of what family is supposed to do in terms of socialization, in terms of interaction, all of those things exists even if an individual, any given individual doesn't talk to or interact with their family, right? We still have some conversations there. Um, the I, the, the relevant thing that I need to explain in terms of clarifying this concept for videos, I'm not going to, as I said, go through everything, is that our agents of socialization do different things, right? They sort of describe different kinds of relationships, right? And so we learn largely different things from different agents of socialization. So, for example, it's unlikely that your peers are the ones who taught you how to use a fork, brush your teeth, brush your hair, any of those things, that stuff probably came from your family, right? Likewise, the first language you learned also probably came from your family rather than from media because you sort of have a social need to connect with your family in that sort of way. Um, and one of the things that it's really important to understand about these agents of socialization overall um, is that to a greater or lesser degree, depending, we'll sort of talk a little bit about media at the end of that, but to a greater or lesser degree, these are things that individuals participate in. So it's not a question where sort of individuals sit back and just like get stuff beamed in from their various agents of socialization. What actually happens is that they interact every day with these agents of socialization. And as an individual is learning from that agent of socialization, the agent of socialization is learning from the individual as well. A really great example of looking at this is if you have siblings or you know people in your world who have siblings um, and their parents responded to them very differently. Um, so for example, my younger brother is uh, a really smart guy but he can also be really oppositional. So the second you tell him you have to do X, the last thing he wants to do is X. That's it. Um, whereas for me growing up, um, like telling me you need to do X because of Y was really helpful, right? Like I appreciated knowing the reasons and so telling me why I needed to do it was a way of getting me to do it. My brother would just sort of ignore you. So my mother and father socialized him differently than they socialized me. And I don't necessarily mean they tried to teach him different things. I just mean that they interacted with him in different ways because they learned very early on what worked and what didn't. Okay, so when we talk about that sort of process of interaction and almost any parent you talk to, if you need to 
proof of this, go talk to your own parents and ask them whether or not they actually parented their children the way they thought they were going to parent their children, because I've yet to meet a parent who actually did that. They're like, nope, the second my kids arrived, everything was different and I had to make some new decisions and figure some stuff out, okay? Um, and so that sort of process, that's, that's really, really important in that kind of conversation because it's important to understand, for example, that, and this is a, another example that you guys might have some experience with, um, when I went through my undergraduate education, the rule was no one should have their phone ever in class um, and like faculty would confiscate them immediately. In a contemporary context, um, I don't necessarily do this because I think I'm super tech savvy. I'm really not. Um, but if I'm teaching in person, I often have students look up details on their phone. Right. And part of the reason for that is that even though I was socialized with an expectation and a sort of set of rules, and we'll talk about norms and stuff like that a little later on, um, that you never have your phone on in class. The reality is, is that as students came through classes, they always had them. Um, and they weren't necessarily using them in a way that was disruptive, right? The context of the technology changed so I could do something different with them, right? Um, now, my students all have is essentially like access to all kinds of details and specific knowledge. So if something comes up in class and it's not a piece of information I have right on the tip of my tongue, I can get them to look it up. And we can talk about that from like an app perspective of having accurate information. Um, so when we talk about that kind of interaction, like individuals are shaped by their social institutions and by their agents of socialization, but they also shape those agents in turn. Right? Um, that's one of the things that we mean when we talk about socialization being sort of like an ongoing process that never ends. Um, so, uh, and one, another, for example, another quick example of a, an agent of socialization that isn't in your book, but is sort of connected to what is in your book, is the, is the idea of, for example, a workplace, right? When you're in the workplace, like in any given workplace, you need to learn the specific rules of that workplace but you are learning a whole bunch of things about who you are, what you're supposed to be doing, all of those pieces, um, and you're shaping your workplace in turn, right? Um, because your interactions in the workplace create a, an environment that other people work in and then other people in that environment react to you. Um, so when we talk about those agents of socialization, that's what I want you guys to understand, really, um, is that there are differences between those agents of socialization, uh, but in there, none of them are passive, right? You don't just receive all of them. Even when you talk about something like mass media, which we often think about as being sort of unidirectional and that the media, you don't really get to talk back to most forms of media. You don't get to sort of argue with what characters in your favorite television show do or anything like that. Um, there's still a kind of interaction piece, right? If you think about media as something that has largely a commercial interest, they care about what you buy. Um, they care about what you watch. So your decisions about what you do and do not watch um, have some effect on what is produced and, and made later on. Um, it's maybe not the same as the kind of impact you can have on your family, but there is still an interactive piece to that. 